Act 3, The Twilight Flood, Chapter 14, Rising Tides. Oh, there's Hex. Grace? Is Grace here? Good mythical morning to, to you too, Hex. This isn't funny, Innkeeper. Tell me, is she here? Please tell me she's here. She is. I'll let her know you are too. Thank you. By the dragons, I was worried sick. So sick. She'll be happy to know you're safe and sound too. The flood was enormous. And if she had gotten caught up in it... Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to even begin to imagine. Then don't. How about a drink to calm your nerves? Um, yes, a drink sounds great. Something, something that will untangle my thoughts and help me focus. I'll see what I can do. Alright, I need something with a lot of intelligence and... For Hex, I try to go, I like to go with the Silent Owl. And that is... Yeah, I'm gonna do... This one. Touch of Intelligence. Some Agility, and then some Strength. Yep, the Silent Owl. Maybe this will help clear your mind. It does, at least a little bit. Thank you, innkeeper. Hex, good to see you safe and well. You too, where have you been? Are you all right? Did you get hurt? I'm fine. The innkeeper and yesterday's superstars took good care of me. Just like you took good care of us. The least we could have done was be there for each other. How have you been, brother dear? Did you get hurt? No, but I was worried about you. The whole night, locked in that damned house, all I could think about was how the flood might have... Why didn't you tell me you were going to the tavern? I looked everywhere for you. Oh, sorry. I didn't know I needed your permission to go outside. That's not what I'm trying to say. Then what are you trying to say? That... That... You could have gotten hurt, and I wouldn't have known. I don't expect a tsunami to hit Gaia every day. That wasn't in the foreseeable future, Hexy. Uncontrollable things happen, and when they do, we do our best to overcome them. Also, I can protect myself quite well. Still, how was I supposed to know that you were safe? I'm an adult, you know. You could try t trusting in my capabilities. Furthermore, PSOAOR PSOR, was very useful last semester. PSOR? Protective sigil sigils and other remedies. Ah. Also, the tavern itself is well protected by my own brand of sigils. That's at least something. Yes, I'm very thankful the innkeeper and her tavern kept me safe. I didn't mean to worry you. I didn't plan on being gone for so long. But then the flood happened. Okay, sure. How have you been holding up? Is the house alright? Apart from some minor damage and some leaking in the roof, I suppose it's fine. I wasn't even aware of the approaching flood until the house's foundation started trembling. I was busy in my workshop, harvesting the essence of Dimension 567 for my research. I hope you didn't ru rip a hole in the fi fiber of magic again. I didn't, and even if I did, you couldn't have stopped me. You weren't there, after all. Right. But I can't scold you now. You won't want to when you find out I actually managed to harvest something. You did? That's amazing. What a huge breakthrough. That would mean... I created a teeny tiny rift in the astral realm and got my hands on some stardust. Well, sort of. How? I got an astral shard when the stars fell. Ah, I see. 
There's still the issue of never knowing exactly what might come through when you open these kinds of rifts. Could be anything or anyone. Like creatures, for example. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, it wouldn't. Because when your sister disappears again, you wouldn't know if she got eaten by a creature or was just out for a stroll. Hex, cut it out. What? We get it, alright? I went away, you were worried. We get it. But I'm my own person, I can do what I like. I'm getting tired of this. Well, me too. Then stop. I don't want to fight. Then don't. Sorry. It's fine. We shouldn't spend our time fighting when there's so many more interesting so many more interesting things going on. How about a wee bit of distraction? Oh, we could go outside and see if we could take samples of the flood water. Exactly, who knows? Maybe it holds spectacular and rare magical properties. That sounds lit. Maybe it'll help me finish my long-term research project. Possibly. Though, to access the primordial vortex, you'd need primordial seawater, I know. But who knows what we'll find? Don't forget to fill me in on your research. Theopractically, I tell you anything. But only theopractically. Wouldn't have expected anything else. Thank you, innkeeper, for hosting me the night and all. See you soon. Good morning, you two. Did you sleep well? As well as could with the sweet song of stormy waves pattering against my window. So, very well with inspiring dreams. Glad to hear that. Your impromptu concert certainly helped me sleep. Because it was so boring? No, because it calmed my nerves. All of our nerves, I think. Not that I have any. You don't have nerves? Is that a phantasm thing? No, I, I, I meant those metaphorical nerves. Oh, you get those too? No, of course not. I'm Voy. Well, yeah, sometimes. Mostly when I have to perform. Isn't that embarrassing? Not really. That also make me nervous. Oh. Though, I have to say last night performing for you, for, for Grace and the innkeeper, it was kind of relaxing. I could just lose myself in the performance without having to worry about what anyone would think of me. Not that I ever do. But... It was nice. We should make more music together sometime. Um... No, actually, Fable just got started on a new song. Maybe you two can collaborate. Really? That would be awesome. Well, I actually... Yes, you're right. That would be awesome. I think working out together could be fun. Uh, expletive? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hooray! I'm looking forward to our grand collaboration. And charming you with it, Innkeeper. Alright. I'll hold y'all to that. You're supposed to say you're looking forward to it. Um, I don't think you're supposed to say that part out loud. Uh, no, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, I did say that. That just wasn't a choice yet. That's what I thought. Aren't we going to be cool together? The coolest. Too cool for me to describe. I already know we'll blow you away. I'm counting on it. Enough chit-chat. I should check up on the village. Maybe someone needs a good song to cheer them up. I'm sure Bea would love one. I think Bea could probably be would, was probably cheered up by a good flood. But speaking of her, maybe you can hand out some, some of her spa coupons for me. Sure thing, her spa rocks. I shall start by enlightening Grace. Is she still here? No, she just left together with Hex. Something about primordial water. Those wizards, I'll try to catch up to them. See you soon. 
Don't finish the song without me, Fable. I'll wait for you. Can I get one of those coupons? Sure you can. Just make sure to tell Baya I sent you. Of course. What a strange morning. Or exciting morning? Both, I think. Would you like a morning drink? Please. Yeah, we don't have anything. Oh, I was like, we don't have an order. Yeah, she's gonna want the swift strike. Um... So I wonder if you can do that, where you can just mix another drink and just add and have three, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the swift strike. Because I would like another drink that's got the three agility. A drink with zero primordial water, maybe. It does taste a little primordial and very delicious. Perfect. You know, last night when I couldn't sleep, I was watching the fish swimming by the windows. Their scales kept reflecting the water, making them sh shift and shimmer like they weren't, they almost weren't there. I was mesmerized, mesmerized by them. It was like a dream that kept pulling me towards the waves. It was beautiful and haunting. Do you think it looks like that every day somewhere? That beautiful? That haunting? I think any place we can imagine exists somewhere, if only in our heads. I'd like to see all those places. I don't think they're all safe to see. Fable! By the dragons, they're here. Are you alright? I am. The innkeep kept me safe. It's good to see you. See you both are well, too. Couldn't you have let us know you were breathing? We couldn't find you anywhere. I'm sorry. I just woke up. Were you guys worried about me? Maybe. Of course we were. Don't even know if you can swim. I can. Can you? Of course. What about Melly? Kara says no. Oh. We should teach you sometime. Sure. Thank you for worrying about me. But I actually had a pretty nice night. Boy and I gave Grace and the innkeeper a small concert while we were all stuck inside. Oh, sad that we missed that. I can track down Boy to give you guys an encore. That'd be nice. I'm sorry I didn't get around to picking you up. It's okay. I bet the roads were a bit busy. Yeah, it was a little tough getting out. Rufus loved it, though. Think he made some new friends. Seems like this catastrophe had some pleasant side effects. What happened anyway? Did a whale eat a moon this time? No idea what that's supposed to mean, but no, or maybe, no idea how it happened. They say the primordial sea flooded the twilight chasm, and it all spilled out through its portals into Fiosa, leaving us with this mess. That's new. At least the other continents probably got through it without much trouble. For once, they can be less jealous of, a, of our portals. I do hope everyone is okay. Everyone could check on... Everyone could check on it. Luckily for us, the water's drained enough to rescue everyone around here. Though I heard that underwater hasn't emerged yet. Happy to see you all emerged. Mostly. What does that mean? Um, are you still looking for someone? Yes, I was wondering if Melly is here. Yeah, I asked that. I asked about that. She wasn't home when I checked on her. No, she didn't stop by yesterday, nor today. Did you see her before that? Did she say where she'd be going? I'm afraid she hasn't been in since you returned from Zoford. That wizard punk hasn't seen her either. Took a second 
to ask to ask him when he almost broke down Kuma's door looking for Grace. Do we do we know if she can swim? I'm sure she can, and I'm sure she's just taking shelter so elsewhere. You taught her how to hide well, after all. Maybe she's just putting that to good use. When I returned yesterday, I found Rufus eating out of a strange apparatus that dispenses food and water every couple of hours. Like someone really smart set it up for him in their absence. Yes, he was gorging himself on some food, but Melly was nowhere to be found. Oh, that's worrying. Did she leave a note? No. Okay, now I'm starting to get worried about Melly. Maybe ask Jade for help. She's very good at finding things. I shall investigate that avenue right now. Fable, would you be okay with our moving our time? Time? You got an appointment or something? More like a date. Can't wait for that story. I'll tell you later. But, um, yes, we should move it. This isn't the kind of dancing in the rain I was hoping for. Me neither. Another time, then? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I hope she didn't try to investigate the fish. They'd eat her alive. Sounds a little more hopeful. The girl's savvy. I mean, look at that contraption she left behind. Ain't no fish got a chance against her. Being hopeful isn't really my thing. Then make it your thing. I'll let you know if, when I find her. Such a man of few words. A man of expletive words. He's just worried. Uh, uh-huh. Speaking of worries and words, Care, it's good to finally see you back. How was the escorting? I hope you didn't get too wet. It was... It happened. How did it happen? Well... Actually, this can wait a bit, right? Uh, yeah. Thanks for understanding. I'll be back later, once I can think more clearly. Still got some people I'd like to check up on. Fable, I'm guessing you'd like to check in with your family, too? Yes, I would love to make sure everyone's alright. Maybe Melly's with the Armentine, Armentine Hydra. She really wanted to ask for its tea recommendations. I'm counting on you re returning with a good story. Don't get too excited. I'll see if I can drag Ray and Fancy Pants along with... I think they could use a drink. Speaking of which, got one for the road? Sure thing. Something's trying to get you through all that socializing? You got it. And let's do... Let's do Sailor's Courage. Um, we want... Yeah, we could do Chili Peppers... We could not those, not those. Or, yeah, we're gonna do. Yeah, we'll do pine cones. And then we'll do a touch of agility, a touch of charisma, and then top it off with a little bit more strength. Say, so, that's a southern brawler. I wanted Sailor's Courage. What am I missing? Oh. There we are. There's the Sailor's Courage. Thank you, Andu. I mean, southern brawler works too, but... There you go. The strongest thing I could brew up for you. Thanks. Miss these drinks. A little. Oh, that's sweet. Don't dwell on it. Anyway... Fable, let's go. I'll be right there. I'm sure everybody will be okay, Innkeeper, so don't worry about it. And make sure to keep hot chocolate warm for Melly. I'm sure she'd love one of those. I'll give it my best. I know you will. Don't swim out too far. We'll see. The waters are dangerous these days. 
Just what are you up to? Time to make sure I have enough ingredients for a hot chocolate around, I guess. Good to see you're open, innkeep. And a good evening to you, Una. Ha, spare me the babbling. Though I'm glad to see you seem to be unharmed. I am, thanks to some protective spells I put on the inn a while back. Works better than any insurance. What about you? Are you unharmed? I'm as good as new. Might be missing an arm, but that doesn't mean I forgot how to swim. It's easier than walking, actually. And breathing in water instead of air was unexpectedly nice. These gills aren't just for decorative purposes. Felt a little bit like home, you know? But the water tasted different than that of the astral sea. More primordial, I might even say. Yeah, I figured. But you don't seem to be very worried about it. Nah, whatever happens is none of my business now. I'm retired. And water also doesn't bother me. Shouldn't bother you too much either, am I right? Since you are close to... I knew you wouldn't forget. I might be old, but I'm not senile. Me neither. So you wouldn't call the Primordial Sea your home, then? I've inhabited a few planes already. My past doesn't define the word home for me anymore. But you're right. Primordial water doesn't do any harm to me. Even if I wanted to drown in it, I wouldn't be able to. But honestly, I was more worried about my patrons and the inn itself. I hope everyone is safe and well. Wouldn't worry too much about all your regulars. Adventurers are tough folks, and your drinks toughen them up even further. I have faith that you're right. But your tavern... Well, let's just say it's definitely seen better days. Nah, that's kind of an understatement. It looks like expletive. Ouch. I've been working the whole day to clean up as much as I can. My condolences. Say, have you talked to the wizard of Morlia? No. Sadly, I haven't had the pleasure. Oh, you should if you get the chance. He's always loved all kinds of spells and enchantments. More of the kind involving trickery like puzzles and traps, but I'm sure he also knows a protective spell or two. I mean, he's been protecting his wizard tower for quite some time now. I'll keep that in mind if I ever get to meet him. But I suppose you're not just here to talk. How about a drink? Ha, you definitely have a way with customer service. How about a drink that'll wake my old muscles up so that I can help you tidy up the tavern afterward? Um, can't quite remember having asked for help. Ah, uh, what's that? My old ears suddenly can't understand what you're saying. How unfortunate. Maybe a strong drink would help. All right, coming up, right up. And you want that one, so we're going to do a Sailor's Courage. So we're going to do that, not with that one. Uh, no, Sailor's Courage go with, yeah, the Citrine. There we go. So we're going to do a touch of dexterity. We've got that, and we'll just do a touch of strength. And a touch of charisma. There we go. Sailor's Courage. Done. There you go. A drink powerful like the Astral Sea. Wonderful. I consume enough primordial water to last me weeks. And? It doesn't taste exactly like home. 
but the hint of elemental magic revived some old memories. I gotta say, you definitely know your craft. Thank you. Could I maybe convince you to just relax and let me do my work? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Forget it. Let's clean this messy tavern. If you insist. Before I forget, all that water swept some animal remains into my pockets. Don't really know where they came from, and I don't really feel any kind of astral energy coming from them. So I assume they're either Gaian or Primordial. Primordial. And before I stab myself with them while I'm clean, while cleaning, I want to check if you'd have any use for them. Stab? Yeah, they're surprisingly sharp. Now I'm curious, let me see. Ha, you're so easy. Fusion Saber Fang. Thank you, Una. They may not be primordial, but I think I know just what to do with them. Gonna spice up some drinks? Maybe. Can't wait to try them then. And now let's spice up this old rusty tavern. I mean, we're gonna fix the window? There's Karen Rayo. Welcome back to my tavern, brave adventurers. Good to see you're all unharmed and doing... Well? I'm not getting... At least we didn't drown. By the way, who's that granny on your porch? Looks like she's collecting driftwood. Don't mind her. She's an old friend of mine with some weird habits. She wanted to help tidy up my tavern after the flood. That's kind of nice, actually. I suppose so. I couldn't convince her to let me do it alone. Did the flood hit you as well? You bet. Had to hold on to Rhea for a quick second there, or else she would have been swept away like a twig. Ah. Uh, heard your... Yeah. Uh, we had just passed Themis when it happened. Luckily, there were two carriages nearby, wedged between sturdy trees and a large boulder. We had managed to pull ourselves out of the raging waters and into those carriages. Thank the dragons, it could have gone south really quick. And your tavern looks a wee bit wet as well. It is. I've been working nonstop to clean it up. That's not good. Working nonstop comes with being self-employed, I guess. No, I mean the flood. Never heard of a flood that massive. It spread all the way from Thymus to Zynath. You're right. We certainly aren't that close to the sea, Thymus, maybe, but not your inn. It's all very recent. We'll have to wait until we know the true extent of it. Did you not realize that it's, there's still water outside the window? But what about your mission? Did you complete it before the flood started? I'm gonna guess. Come to think of it, Archie, you've been awfully quiet today. That's very unlike the noble hero, I know. Give him a break, would you? We had some pretty rough nights. Oh, did something go wrong? The drink you prepared for us with those golden feathers? I remember. I mean, it did what it was supposed to, but it wasn't enough. Don't know if another potion could have changed our fate, though. What happened? I'm gonna guess Archie's friend didn't make it. I guess I'm telling the story then. Let's begin. We actually would have been well prepared if this had been a normal escorting mission, that is. It all started like a regular quest. We met our client in his temporary abode, which looked like it was worth more money than Care and I will ever make in our lives combined. Correct. Anyways, our client's name was Theodore. Theodore Hugo Frederick Sinclair III, to be exact. He told us politely not to call him by his full name, so we agreed on Theodore. He's the noble son of some wealthy diplomat, hence the long name. I figured. 
and you had to go get him to diarrhea to Diria before some financial because of some financial conflicts between them and the mainland. Correct. At first, everything went surprisingly well. Since the magical bridge got destroyed, we had to get to Diria by ship. Because of the dispute, no ships from the mainland are allowed to dock in Amasa, so we had to take the long way. From the port of Windmore to the Windy Meadows to Twinborough, and then to Amasa by foot. All with a young nobleman that rarely strays from home. The kid had some quirks and mannerisms neither of us were familiar with. But luckily, Archie was there to help us out. I tend to be a little wary around rich, rich people, but we actually got along quite well. Especially little Archie here was hanging on his every word. We didn't take the main road to avoid too much unwanted attention. Moving quickly through the Darien tundra, we only encountered a few obstacles like tree trunks. Rhea and I kept the path clear while Archie entertained our client. He was quite useful after all, even though it was his first quest. He definitely knew how to tell stories and keep us entertained. Theodore loved every tale Archie told. Yeah, seems like you're a natural born storyteller. You also have a surprising amount of knowledge about plants and stuff in that orange head of yours. I... I'm glad I could be of help. Theo rarely went outside, so I assisted him with my knowledge of plants that sting or those with poison. That's a very helpful skill. Everything went as planned until the sun started setting. I think my ears picked it up first. They were like a bunch of low humming sounds, far away still, but definitely unusual. Didn't hear anything, but I'm always trust but I'd always trust the fluffy ears of a Volkakin over me own. I asked the two boys if those types of sounds were common around there, but they both denied it. That's when I started getting this weird feeling in my guts. Every experienced adventurer knows that sooner or later, it's like a sixth sense to keep you out of trouble. Um, I've heard about, I know what you're talking, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That looming feeling deep within your stomach. I knew something was wrong and that if we didn't get out of there, our situation would only get worse. At first, I just told Rhea, didn't want to alarm the two boys. Your client should never be afraid. That's just bad customer service. Agreed. So we quietly tried to figure out what to do. By then, I could only faintly hear the deep sounds. But if I could hear them, Archie and Theodore could as well. And they also heard us talking. That's unfortunate. We agreed on positioning the two boys between us, even though Archie proclaimed he could fight as well. A simple but inf an effect efficient lineup me at the back of the line, care in the front, because she's got the best ears. Theodore was still calm. He said something along the lines of, of course they tried to start an assault. That's why I hired you, remember? He's not wrong. I just would have expected more, you know, the regular kind of assassin. Whatever that might be. If you'd let me continue, you'd get it. Sorry, my bad. To make things worse, it got real dark real quick, and we could hear that guttural grunting all around us. She said, Bogging crap, where are they? Where are they coming from? But, well, at first I could only see one, then two, then suddenly they were everywhere. Zombies. We were surrounded by zombies. I had to think fast. There weren't any gaps in their formation, so I knew we had to fight. Thanks to those enchanted feathers in your drink, I was able to quickly overpower two zombies by smashing their heads together. You're strong. I like strong women. I pushed both boys forward so they'd get moving. I knew if we wanted them to get out of the, if we wanted to get out of there in one piece, we needed to stay together. Care was blocking attacks left and right, slicing through rotten skin and brittle bones with her great sword. She was a sight to behold. My sword lended me its power to fight us through. 
but I would have needed more time to figure out a plan. There was just so many of them. I knew we had to get back to the main road. The terrain so deep in the forest was very uneven, made running aw away from a horde of the undead even more difficult. How did so many of them get there? At least it was apparent why all those animals had disappeared on the road. They got eaten by the undead. And we'd be next if we didn't get the expletive out of there. So we ran. But turns out a nobleman's clothes aren't made for running. They made for nothing except looking obnoxious. They're not even that comfortable. I was more prepared than Theo, but even some of my seams ripped. I could hear Rhea behind us telling us to hurry up unless we wanted to die. So I wrapped my hand around Theo's velvet-coated wrist and we didn't we just didn't let go. There was no way I would let anyone die on my first mission. But then, right before we got to the main road, he tripped. I suppose it was bound to happen. Rhea had somehow outrun us and was already stumbling onto the main road ahead. I tried to pull Theo up, by his f up on his feet, but his pants must have gotten caught in some thorns and he, he just couldn't get up. I tried to get him free, I really tried, but my hands were just so sweaty and shaky. I saw the zombies, I saw their rotting faces as they got closer and close. I was too far away to realize what was going on, and when I finally noticed, it was too late. I knew getting to the road was our main priority, but when I got there, the two boys were missing. I knew something must have gone wrong. I turned around, and right as I did, I saw Archie and Theodore on the ground. A bunch of zombies was getting close to them. I warded off the first two, maybe three, but but there were just so many of them. Then Theo screamed, the most horrifying scream filled with pain and agony. I've, I've read about that sort of scream before, but I didn't think it would sound so, so heartbreaking with gut-wrenching. Yes. That's when Rhea and Carolyn suddenly appeared next to us again. They pushed the zombies back and helped Theo get up. Well, as much as they could with what was left of his left leg. I know I had to come up with a plan. There were too many zombies for us to fight, and running away would have been difficult since Theodore was hurt. But your drink was driving me forward. Kind of like a drinkable lucky charm. I had already slain a Chimera, so I should have been able to handle a few undead and a hurt client with ease. Slain a Chimera? Chimera. Uh, yeah. Oh, you keep surprising me. Sadly, slaying all those undead wasn't a possibility, but maybe, I thought to myself, maybe I could outsmart them. Theo was hurt, and he wasn't looking too good. The undead seemed to be drawn to the smell of his fresh blood. And thanks to your drink, I was still quite hasty. I knew I could outrun any dead expletive. So on a whim, I turned back to the other three. Rhea was still trying to fight back dozens of monsters while Archie supported Theodore. I grabbed a piece of bloody cloth that had been ripped off of Theodore's leg. I don't know if they listened or if it was just the smell that drew them to me, but I yelled. I'm here. Come and get y'all a fresh piece of meat. I thought she'd grown, grown crazy, I tell you. But it was a smart move. I definitely had their attention. Archie was out of it, so I told Rhea to just follow the path to Amasa and treat Theodore's wounds as quickly as possible. I would then catch up with them as soon as I was done there. And that's what we did. I don't argue with women that are taller and faster than me. Her quick thinking probably saved our expletive. Good call, both of you. I led those brain-dead monsters in the opposite direction. Turns out, I could easily outrun them. But I wanted to get rid of them once and for all, or else we wouldn't have been safe for long. And as soon as I spotted a cliff between the trees with nothing but a vast sea further on, I knew what I had, I knew what to do. I knew I had to override my instincts, so it was kind of dangerous, 
everybody. I yelled one more time. Come and get me if you can. And then I threw the piece of cloth off the cliff. My instincts kicked in, wanting to play fetch. Luckily, my will was stronger than the monsters. After one after another, they tried to catch the blood-drenched fabric and jumped, falling to their, well, hopefully final deaths. Can't believe that actually worked. Me neither, but otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. I'm glad. It seems like the undead are kind of like pack animals, at least for the most part. A few of them didn't take the bait, but nothing my greatsword couldn't fix. I followed Ray on the boys' tracks until we met up again. We could already see the light of a massa in the distance. But we hadn't been fast enough. With every step, Theo's hand grasping my shoulder was already getting weaker and weaker. I didn't even dare look at his face while I talked to him to keep him awake. Even when... Even when his answers started getting sparse and quiet. But you made it, right? I'm gonna take that as a no. Right? We... No. He didn't make it. Uh, tell me that's not true. I, I wish it wasn't. But I'd never lie about someone's death. Especially... Especially not his. I'm so sorry, Archie. I didn't know the mission would be so danger. It's not your fault, Inkeep. It's none of our faults, either. Maybe I should have prepared a different drink for you. It's alright. We did our best. Things don't always go as planned. I guess life isn't as magically perfect as the numerous tales I've read would suggest. Bad things can happen to anyone, even to those with the purest of hearts. Some may deserve it, but most don't. I just... I just wish it wouldn't have been him. It's such a selfish thought, but I can't get it out of my head. And that's fine. It's just not fair. Why him? I apologize. I didn't mean to raise my voice like that. It's all right, kid. We know the pain you feel. You know, some deaths are inevitable. Illness, old age, whatever it may be. Those are easier to stomach, even if they hurt. That's true. And then there are deaths which are completely unexpected. Those don't feel fair to us. They make us think, if I only did this, if I only said that, and so forth. But you mustn't dwell on those feelings. It's okay to mourn, but you can't change the past. The only thing you can change is the future. Live the life your friend would have wanted for you. Make him proud. I, I suppose you're right. What did you do then? Did you still go to Amasa? We, we did, yes. He must have died just before we arrived. Someone from the Night Watch recognized him. We were immediately surrounded by healers, but it was already too late. You may bring bodies back from the dead, but not souls. After we explained the situation and how I got rid of the zombies, they offered for us to stay the night. We needed some rest before making our way back the next morning. I also sent a letter to Theo's family. I wanted to, after all, I've known them since I was a child and I was with him in his last moments. If someone was going to deliver the bad news, it needed to be me. I'm not sure I could have acted so calm and collected. I... I really wasn't. Also, I don't know if this is perhaps too macabre, but 
Would you hold on to something for me? Of course. What is it? It's the quill that I used to write the letter to Theo's parents. I must have lost my supplies somewhere on the way to Deiria, so I had to buy a new quill. First, I thought of it as a nice memento, but the wound is still too fresh. I'll hold on to it as long as you need me to. Thank you, innkeeper. Just trying to see where it got added. Um, just what's going to happen with the dispute between Deiria and the mainland now? Now that the ambassador has died on Darien soil, it's just such a big mess. And we didn't fix anything. We just made things worse. Anyway, I'm just so terribly tired. Please excuse me. Good night, everyone. You want to sleep here tonight? Uh, sometimes a little company can do wonders. And you'll be safe from any potential floods. I'll also be sleeping here. I suppose you're right. Maybe I'll occupy one of your rooms then, dear innkeeper. Of course. One upstairs, third door on the left. Make yourself at home. I think I'll just sleep. But I appreciate your kindness. Thank you. Good night, everyone. I hope he'll be all right. Let the kid grieve. I guess asking if either of you'd like a drink would be an insensitive at this point. Don't. Got it. Instead, Carrot, let's talk about your extraordinary fighting skills. I gotta say, I was really impressed with how you decimated those zombies. Takes a good beast slayer to know one. Nah, I'm more of a general fighting type, you know, but I can always appreciate two strong hands. And such a well-crafted great sword on top of that. Happy to see you appreciate strong craftsmanship. It was a gift from my Baba. She told me the great dragons themselves gifted it to her, but I don't know if that's true. Could be. You want to get to Chimera, after all. You might be onto something there. Have you ever heard of the Great Axe of Ur? Most powerful weapon ever, forged by the origin of the world themselves? You bet. Think it really exists? I mean, my Baba loved to tell stories. But if her sword was made by the dragons, maybe Ur's great axe is also more than just a myth. Dwarves have their origin in the subterranean caves, you know, on the plains of Ur. I grew up in a labyrinth of caves, surrounded by gems and ores, legends and tales. I mean, I haven't seen it with my own two eyes yet, but I'm convinced the legendary weapon exists. I bet it's so large, I probably wouldn't even recognize it as an axe. I've heard Ur keeps it in their resting place at all times. Yeah, though so far no one has found it that yet. And hopefully no one ever has to. What do you mean? You know the tale. If someone was to wake Ur up, the apocalypse would begin. But that's just an old tale, right? Something you tell kids that don't want to eat their food? You know, eat up or Ur will awaken. Questionable parenting techniques, if you ask me. Yeah, I got to hear that a few times w when I was still... Uh, when I was still a wee burn. All those tales ever did was make me want to craft a legendary weapon myself. Have you ever made something like it? Not yet. But I will soon. I'll make the greatest weapon ever forged and smash this year's Orhart blacksmith in competition to bits. I'll outcra I'll outcraft my ex-husband with ease. That expletive. Ex-husband? Yeah, we used to work together. Now he claims I wouldn't stand a chance without him, but I'll prove him wrong. Anyways, and keep care. I think it's getting quite late. And it's been an exhausting week. Absolutely agreed. Let's get some rest. And then look for another quest elsewhere to afford me crafting materials. 
Good night, you two. Good night, Care. Night, Innkeep.